Welcome back. Our next guest has graced the stage, the big screen, and television for more than 60 years. Louis Gossett Jr. earned an Emmy for playing Fiddler in the iconic series Roots, but he's perhaps best known for playing a tough gunnery sergeant in An Officer and Gentleman, for which he won an Academy Award. In his latest film, he plays the role of a man dealing with dementia. The Cuban is playing right now at the Pan-African Film Festival. His name is Luis, and he used to be this famous musician back in Cuba. He even played the Cotton Club. He played with Bowser, Machido, Dizzy Gillespie. And he told you all of this. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really play with all these people? Ladies and gentlemen, El Gizan! Is that you? Yeah, we've known each other a long time since we uh, but decided. A forgotten legend. And you're sure it's him? You don't have time to talk to your dad. He enjoys company. He's a drunk. Things are not so simple. Well, why not? Why can't they be simple? You must follow our care. Mm. So powerful already. Hey, join us now, Luke Gossett Jr., along with director Sergio Navarretta. Welcome oh, to you both. How Thank lovely you, to have you Thank both you. here. Thank Thanks you. for having Thank us. Very much. How did you get him to be in your movie? Blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian. Does that have something to do with it? Um, I, uh, as you were reading out his bio, I mean, I was just overwhelmed. I, I still can't believe it, to be honest. Um, I was always a fan. When I was a kid, uh, my parents sat me down and we watched Roots. Mm. Yeah. And then several years later, we met at his home and I'm looking at the, the mantle with all the awards and the poster of Roots. I was just overwhelmed. So what and was it uh, about, what was about this, this role? I mean, you, could, you have it, your choice of roles out mm -hmm. there. And, well, I was inspired by a performance that Robert De Niro did in a film called Awakenings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to see if I could do that kind of transition. But the other one that, that really got me is my high school uh, history. Uh, the music in the high school history was Tito Puente Machito. Mm -hmm. And I knew all the, all this, I knew Spanish. And so that uh, in the Brooklyn, for some reason, all of that Latino music stayed in my bones, our bones. Mm. The Carol Kings, the, the Barbara Streisands, we all knew how to do all that music and knew all that stuff. It's just full circle. And like a, yeah. you got to go to Cuba and, and yeah. shoot some of this. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and that must have been an amazing experience in itself. Well, yeah, I had been there before because I, had go, I used to go by, by way of the Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Cuba's a big part, obviously, yeah. because yes. you've been a big part of this film. Yeah. Yes. Cuban culture is... Um, there's parts of it that we should all aspire to to be a part of. Just Absolutely. the fact that you know Africa, uh, you know people from Africa, people from Europe, uh, you know they've all sort of integrated uh, through the culture, through the music. It's all fused together, mm -hmm. and you hear it through the Afro-Cuban jazz, and a lot of the music featured in the movie sort of uh, points to that uh, right. happy ending. In 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 the fact that they all consider themselves Cuban first. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a really beautiful culture. And, and, and the movie has been summarized as a story of love, friendship, and the, the power of music. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What's the most powerful takeaway for you? The, the heartbeat of that music. You can take that heartbeat around the world with you. Mm. In any kind of song, from waltz to uh, samba, to, to the machito, to all that stuff is very similar. Through the sound of music with rhythm, mm -hmm. people respond. Mm -hmm. We're looking for ways to respond to one another, as it is. And uh, uh, I have a foundation, it's called Eracism. Mm -hmm. And racism is getting in the way of us getting really tight. Because mm -hmm. we need to be really tight in order to save one another on this planet. That's a nonprofit that you founded yes, in, yes, in 2006. Called, yeah. So now it's time for us to try all those ways for us to get closer together. All right, while we have you here, we have to ask you about some of your most memorable moments. Of course, Officer and the Gentleman. Uh -huh. uh, and you're talking about how people remember. Obviously, you walk around town, I'm sure they're. They're, they're screaming mayonnaise to you. Well, especially the ones, <laughs> especially the ones I still owe money to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was like, a, you, were, you were tough. Iconic. Yeah. Well, they tough taught me that role. I went, yeah, yeah. To, uh, went to, uh, to uh, down in San Diego. Yeah. Called MCRD, mm -hmm. Marine Corps Recruitment Division. And they took me there and they taught me what a DI does. Mm -hmm. and so I did everything but smoke just the camels and drink the beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were but they were tough brothers. Tough yeah. brothers. And, and when you won that Oscar, 1983, mm -hmm. was that life-changing for you? In, in a way it was, it was, a little reality change. I figured now, you know, I, I've made it. So I didn't work in the movies for a year, but I worked a lot on television. Mm -hmm. So you get the chance to find out what your value is and uh -huh. who considers it that. It took a year. Right. And this stuff started to balance up. And then, you know, people are coming up to him in the studio here for 
Watchmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. People are going crazy over this. Yeah, Watchmen is a, was quite an experience. Yeah. So I was here the first time with the Book of Negroes, if you will. Mm -hmm. So the Watchmen, and this is kind of a nice relationship we're having with the studio yeah. and with you guys. Thank you for your, for but your it's welcome. Your, but Thank it's your you. career and your generations. Now you've touched people in different parts, yeah. different, mm -hmm. different generations. Yeah. And now you have this new generation of fans with like Watchmen. It, you know, that's all amazing. it amazed me. It amazed me. It's, a, it's, it's quite a thing where Damon Lindelhoff, who created this thing from his mind, uh -huh. he's, that's his baby. Mm -hmm. So we had a little friction. But I told him, look, uh, you know, I'm in my 80s. What? You hired me for a certain Gosh. reason. Maybe you should trust me that I might know somebody yeah. this age as... How does this well, person act? Well, we are really looking forward to uh, this next film. Thank you, folks, for coming in. We want to remind you, tickets available uh, for The Cuban at the 28th Annual Pan-African Film and Arts Festival. It's at Cinemark 15 at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza. For more information, go to paff.org. Mm. The festival runs through February 23rd. Louis Gossett, Jr., what an honor. Thank you. Sergio Navarrete, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be thank right you. back. Thank you.